Restoration. Restoration is brought to you by Pisces. Everyday Pisces for everyday people. Yeah, it's extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got gas protection. Afro chick, I'm going to feel crudient to me in the home. Restoration with Stacy. It is another lovely episode, and I know today's episode is going to be very revealing because some of the things we do take for granted are not things we have to. We'll be right back after this break. Since 1967, Hisense has never relented on its brand promise of manufacturing the highest quality but affordable home appliances for everyday people worldwide. At Hisense, we pride ourselves with the fact that our products play the necessary role it is expected in the lives of our cherished customers. Whatever your home appliances needs are, be it refrigerator, air conditioner, television, gas cooker, electric cooker, iron, rice cooker, washing machine, steamer, kettle, mobile phone, sound system, blender. You can confidently walk into any of our showrooms to pick up what you need at the best price. We are the only company that without a second thought give you five years warranty. Our after-sales service coupled with our great customer service makes us second to none. Quality, style, Energy saving, affordability are our common attributes. High sense, everyday prices for everyday people. Ewine FSA, Ewia A Kono, Afu Chiki Nini, Emoto Kama, Afu Chiki Nini Emma Hufesun Kukra. A fade year natural hair phones when your hair extension. And how more to Afro chicken really be new border fem boko? A natural as a sexual or be with difference. Afro chick, HBS neck of a bye. Open your work, come lemly, your benjo FM. Pray 0202 a very big thank you going to La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Jim Ray Estates, Ophelia of ABS Collection. Thank you very much for my outfit. GTP, thank you very much for my fabric. And my makeup is by Divine Cassie. And my guest makeup is by GH Beauty Artistry. To Vic D Salon, thank you very much for styling my hair. And to Inshilo, thank you for my wake up. Once a girl hits puberty, some of them are likely to experience cramps. But as parents, we would say it is normal. But is this case always normal? Or sometimes we have to get worried by some of these complaints. Our guest today has a story that will really get you thinking whenever your daughter tells you, I'm having menstrual cramps. Let's welcome our guest for today, Kate Bercom. Hi, Kate. Now we do this. No more handshakes, <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I, I mean, when I spoke to you, I was a little bit terrified mm -hmm. because menstrual cramps are menstrual cramps. Yes. Why should anybody be worried? That's what it seems, but that's, it's not just. Um, I'm just going to start from puberty when I start getting my menses. At the age of 14, I was in excruciating pain. And my mom, hmm, we had to go to so many hospitals, then they would refer us finally to Kolibu. So, was it as soon as you as started soon as menstruating? Started, yeah, for me, it was the, the first, first menses. menses was horrible. It felt like I had heavy blocks. I couldn't stand. It was very terrible. I was vomiting. And we had so many trips at Kolibu, and they would tell me I have cysts. And they give me medication, it will How go old away. How were you? I was 14. 14. Yes. And so finally, I think I was 16. And I was diagnosed with dysmenorrhea, which is painful menses, and put on um, contraceptives at the age of 16 Whoa. that it will take care of the whatever pain. was going on. So um, when I get to Kolebu, every month I ended up at A&E because my mom didn't know what to do, really. 
the pain was so severe, I couldn't walk. And when I get to Kolebu, the next was so horrible to me. I started getting panic attacks every time I got to Kolebu. And from what you're saying, this was a monthly routine. A because monthly every routine. month, every your menses and, would come. And it will come. But prior to the menses too, I'm in pain. Whoa. I had chest pain, back pain. I was vomiting, severe abdominal pain. Legs, my legs were just hanging because the pain was so severe that I had to be held. I couldn't walk. So my mom was very worried. We went to a lot of, there's a, a, a time we went to see a fetish priest at that time. Oh, you're kidding. Because my mom was, she thought it was she, spiritual. Like, yes, that's how it got to, it's not like now that we have social media that you can even find out. Mm -hmm. Those times, 89, you have to, even if you have to make a call, you have to go to a comp center. center. So it was really, there was no knowledge of it at all. So she was frustrated. I remember this fetish telling me, um, I have crabs in my abdomen. And I believed him because of how you felt. I felt. We, we went everywhere. I mean, crabs. crabs. So how, yeah. how was he going to take the crabs out? Well, he said he did whatever he did, but obviously he didn't do anything <laughs> because I was getting more pain. So he didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't do anything. God forgive us. That time my mom wasn't into, so she, we didn't she, know. She, I mean, she lack of again. knowledge. So, I mean, I don't think <laughs> now anybody... Were well, you not family. scared? I wasn't scared. As, as the pain was going on, just I didn't mind... No, I didn't mind, where I, was, I didn't mind wherever I was going. I want the pain to go away. So no matter what you're going to do to me, I had... I was doing herbal medication. I'm not saying herbal is not good, but it didn't work for me. All types of medication, big, small. Everybody will say this, Madam Catherine, then we go and buy it. This is... We tried so many medication and it did nothing was helping. But thank God, finally, when I traveled to London, even there, there's menses is something that's not serious for them as well. Yeah. Because in general, a woman in pain is normal, mm -hmm. but that should be erased because pain cannot be normal. And it's my goal to let people know that we all have daughters, sisters, wives, we should mothers. mothers we mm -hmm. should be we should know that menstrual pain is not normal pain. I'm talking about pain that is taking you out of work or school. But when we go to the hospitals, they all, they, they brush you aside and say it's normal. So w when you when you got to London, yeah, did you feel okay? At least this is a place where I would be taken seriously. That's what I felt. Okay, so when you got to the hospital and the GP ask you of what, why you're here and you give the details. Okay. Was he disappointed that you were there over menstrual pains? Yes, it was at A&E as well. I had a GP, but this one was the A&E where it was diagnosed. I went to accident and emergency because I couldn't walk. I couldn't take the pain. I was put aside to, uh, they gave me a painkiller and said, sit, we'll, we'll attend to you. Yeah. It's because they don't take menstrual pain seriously. The level one is serious emergency. They put me on six, which is the least. Oh. So it was my brother-in-law who had to come in and say um, they should go and do a test for endometriosis because he, his ex-girlfriend had had the experience, the symptoms I was showing. Immediately, they wheeled me to theater because the way they can I diagnose endometriosis is through a minor surgery, oh. which is called laparoscopy. They put the camera in the yeah. belly button, and then they do the investigation. Lo and behold, they came back and they said it's stage four. And very severe. They were saying they have not seen this, this kind of severity in a black lady. So then they asked if they can use my specimen, my biopsy for um, research, research, because they hadn't seen that severe in any black woman. And you were here walking around yes. for someone to tell you had crops? Yes. It, at the time they went in, this growth had covered all my organs. Whoa. Yes. So if they tried to do a surgery, they could damage my organ. Yeah. So what I did was, they did for me was, put me on medication. This is it's called a Zoladex injection. It puts you into menopause. Injection in my tummy every month for one year to reduce the growth before the surgery. We had the surgery. But for me, it was bittersweet because all my life I've been told 
it's a lie. It's in my head. I'm playing up. Mm -hmm. I'm a big baby. So finally, if I had a name, which is called endometriosis, it's, it's what, let me just explain briefly what endometriosis is. It's every month a woman has thickness in the endometrium, which is the lining of the endometrium, and then it sheds. Every month, the shedding is the, me the menses. menses. But somebody with endometriosis, somehow, these tissues that are supposed to come out, go back in the body and they get stuck. Mm. Why I'm doing this campaign is, the focus was always, oh, reproductive organ, Stacy. It can get to your brain. The tissue can get to your brain, wow. and then you get a fit. So instead of you bleeding down there every month, you're bleeding in the brain, and you're bleeding down there. Because that tissue that escaped wasn't meant to be down in your brain. It was meant to be there. So then it starts bleeding like it's in the uterus. Because wow. that's what is supposed to be there, not in your brain. It can go to your lungs. It fills the lungs every month. Since I started the campaign, I've met two ladies. It's affected their um, belly button. And it's affected their self-esteem because although it's covered, whenever they go to the hospital, they say, go and deal with it. I mean, it's, it's horrible when you're going through pain and the person that has to give you the help is treating you anyhow. I mean, so for me, my mission is to support, educate, be there for these people and their families because it's not, a, it's not a, an easy condition to go through and then be treated like, oh, what's so you be beautiful? Oh, yeah, that's all we get. And funny enough, since I started the campaign, I get more support from men than women. I get women saying, oh, yeah, you know, we have it. So why are you making a fuss about it? Why are you telling everybody your story? This is private. I'm a very private person, but I've seen that I need to talk to save somebody. And I can say that since I started, at least I've, I've met a lot of people directed it to the, the doctor I'm doing the mm -hmm. campaign with, Dr. Francis Dixon of Nova Surgery. He's been very good. He's actually managed endometriosis for over 30 years Whoa. in America. So he's opened a place in East Ligon and he's doing the campaign with me. It's been amazing. I met a 16-year-old girl after a radio program. Her mom called me and she was walking like a penguin. She was out of school for over, almost a year and her mom had given up on her education. So when they contacted me, I took them to a doctor. She's now reading law in Legon. Oh, yeah. So at what point do we get scared? Like, because menstrual cycles are menstrual cycles. cycles it has yeah. to come. Mm -hmm. So at what point should a mother or even a child be scared? Okay, so anytime it's a child is complaining of excruciating pain that's taking them out of school or any other woman out of work, we're just asking the mother not to say it's normal because you're, you're the role model to the child. She will come to you. So if you're the role model, you're saying it's normal, or the teachers out there saying it's normal, then we have a problem. We're only saying that let the gynecologist investigate. That's all we're, we're pleading. Let them look further. If there's nothing, it's fine. But let's not say it's normal, like it happened to me for 11 years, misdiagnosed, and then it gets worse. So it took you 11, 11 years? 11 years. And within the 11 years, what were some of the diagnoses you got? Um, the, the main one was the dysmenorrhea, mm -hmm. which is painful menses. But most of the time that I went to the hospital, I was told it's all in my head. So imagine I can't make it to school and I need time excuse duty or time, I mean, um, something to take to the um, school to mm -hmm. say that this is what's happening to me. The doctor that's supposed to help and say, oh, this is what's happening to you, is telling you it's normal. And then they give me strong medication, very strong, very, very strong medication to take care of the pain that I was going through, which didn't help at all. What were some of your symptoms? My symptoms, the main one was vomiting diarrhea, constipation sometimes, um, severe Which abdominal pain, better, chest the diarrhea pain. or the constipation? None of them was okay because um, at each point of it, it was... It was severe. It was severe because I was in pain, whichever way I was in pain. Like doing the number two, I'm, I'm, I mean, I was in pain. So um, whichever one of them was horrible. Chest pain, back pain. I was in so many 
machines, x-ray, MRI. It was horrible. It was just horrible. But I'm just saying that my experience has taught me that I shouldn't be quiet because something can be done. At the time I was diagnosed, it had affected my reproductive organs, my bowel. Now, I am 20 years down the line. I've had eight surgeries. And the recent one was last month. And it's horrible. If your organs stick together, the bowel was stuck to the uterus because it's a chronic condition at the moment because of the delay in um, diagnosis. So we're saying that your child has just started their menses, coming to you saying, oh, I'm in pain. Let's pay attention to them. Let's let them see a gynecologist. It's okay if they go and there's nothing, but I'm not saying every abdominal pain, pain. is endometriosis. I've just realized endo has been missed. Fibroids is a tumor, it's like a growth. So those, are don't, they don't miss that. But five, I've realized endo, most people miss. What we are doing with the doctor is educating the medical personnel as well as the, the schools and we do um, conferences yes. and stuff. We're always educating TV, radio, social media. That's what we are doing at the moment because everybody needs to, we need to open conversations about endometriosis. I'm, I'm more interested in your case because you went through it. Yes. And it's better to hear it from someone who has experienced it. Mm -hmm. I have friends who say, you, you don't talk a walk you've not walked. Mm -hmm. So you went, um, you were, you said stage four, right? Yes, yeah, stage four. So stage four, you had your first surgery. Mm. So when you had the first surgery, ideally, yeah. you would have assumed you would be fine. Yes. So after the first surgery, when you were not fine, mm. were, you, were you worried? And yes, what were, very worried. What were some of the things you were worried about? Okay. So at the age of 25, I'm, I'm being put in menopause, into menopause, and I'm thinking. And it's not reversible. It is reversible, uh -huh. but I had okay. to be on it for a very long time. I had to be on the injection. For, I would have had more surgeries if I wasn't on the injection. I would have had like 20 or 15 by now. Mm -hmm. It's because it grows back. It does grow back. So I, I believe that the side effects of the medication to is joint pain, like an elderly woman, because it's stopped the estrogen, the production of the estrogen yeah. in the body. And so, so you have it's joint aged your it's aged your system. I always say I feel like an 80-year-old. When I'm going through the symptoms, I feel like an 80-year-old. All my joints hurt. Um, I'm getting dizzy spells every now and then. The worst part is the hot flashes. I'm in the AC and I'm sweating. Like wow. every now and then I'm sweating constantly. So it's not been an easy, easy journey. And at that time, when I had the first surgery, I thought that would be the end. But after the sed first surgery, um, I got paralysis in my left leg. A few days after the surgery, I called them. I said, I can't feel my left leg. And they said, it happens sometimes. You get this tingly feeling mm -hmm. and it will be okay. Two weeks after, I couldn't move my left leg. And <clears throat> it was totally dead. So... This is me, again, 25, and I'm dragging, sorry. Sorry. It's all right. So after going through all the injections, thinking, oh, I'm gonna get better. Then my leg goes off. I'm a young lady. If I go on the bus, they have to go where the baggies go, tilt it down. I lift my leg. So this went on for a while, sorry. And then finally, they, they told me um, I would have to live with the pain forever. And I said, no, that's not what God told me, that I'll go on the operation table and be paralyzed. So I'm not going to accept it. But they don't believe in these things. So they told me, oh, the medication they gave me is making me um, paranoid. Like I'm saying things that, yeah. that won't happen. Like so I said, no, that's not, that's not my promise. God didn't say I'll go on a printing table and come back paralyzed. So no, I won't accept it. But they still referred me to a chronic pain clinic, which I never went. 
I did pray about it for a very long time. They gave me a device that will shock me. I, I put it like Macy is saying, and then the device will be there. Then I'll be turning it, give high, low, just to bring life in the leg, but it didn't work. It still didn't happen. So that went on for another year. And then <laughs> it wasn't like now that there's social media that I can, I would have had pictures and videos to show that this is what was happening. But um, thank God, one day I was in a deep sleep and a voice said, get up and walk. And I started walking. But it wasn't like somebody, like a child learning to walk. walk. I didn't start walking normally um, immediately, but I started walking. So then I said to myself that God has a, a, a purpose for my life because if you look at my reports, the kind of terms and all these mm -hmm. horrible things, anytime I've had a surgery to have had complications and they tell me I you might not come out of it. And even some of them will tell me they can't explain medically because what they thought was happening to me would happen to me through the surgeries I've had. It didn't happen. It didn't. So they always say that um, I'm, some, I'm, I'm a miracle. And I believe <laughs> what I've gone through, I, I have confirmation that God has a purpose for my life. And I, before I was asking God, why me, why me, why me? Yes, because he thinks I can handle it. He's given me the strength to handle it. I'm the voice of the voiceless because he's given me the strength to. And I don't think there's any warrior that won't go through a battle. But I know the end results. The testimony that's coming is going to be bigger. Amen. Because I believe that all this, oh, you have difficulty, you can't have a child. I'll have it. I believe so. The belief that I had that I will work again, that same belief that I would have children, I would have a child by one day. I believe so. And I believe it too, because God is simply amazing and he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. We'll be right back after this break. Afro chicken in a man who extension. A to chicken be difference. Afro HBS Nekofabai. Obey Joy FM. Pray 0202-747464. Afro Chick, I want to crow Jen Chinyen. High sense and that's a cry you bush him say. Yeah, dear, yeah, be your home appliances, a yeah, papa, nanny bo at that form, a man crown cry, and we are self and then you High sense, yeah, dear, dear, do walk why you want to say. Yan your ma, yeah, yeah, a buenipa, a walk on your singing ass, and yeah, mammy musawe, a dear Ben Sanda, we hear. Refrigerator, air conditioner, television, gas cooker, electric cooker, ayo, rice cooker, washing machine, steamer, kettle. Mobile phone, sound system, and our blender. A moon cry to to an ammonia for co high sensual room. BM. Naturally, say, who bring your dear name water from Pato? A sense here, Jim, who is here near my upper painting. High sense, a penny to make a minimum of five years warranty. Yenisha, one year did that. Into Yen Siwan from 
Now to adie wo eho na echi me ba asem so a ye hwe sie sie wo kam enuo ma ye papa enuo ma efe efi enuo ma ense ye nyina ma ho den eno na high sense ye ye high sense everyday prices for everyday people Wondering where to get quality yet affordable kids and baby essentials? Look no further. This is the one-stop shop for you. At Hertz's Mother Care, we stock a variety of kids and baby clothing, shoes, car seats and carriers, baby wardrobes, baby feeding essentials, and everything that you can think of when it comes to babies and kids. Why don't you call us on 0246 553165. We are located on the Ahunjo Main Street, opposite the Fire City. Hetty's Mother Care, your mommy's favorite store. Won't you say you love I remember the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yas extra long sunny chip had took the worry away. Easy. Yas comfort, I got Yas confidence, I got Yas. The new Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. We don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Feel confident, stay fresh. Hi, is this supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. Yes, confidence, I got. Yes. We got yes protection. I got. Yes, extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got yes protection. Yeah, so much matter we are. It's just so much to be swapped away. Who makes it down swap? We are sassy. As I said, so there, we are not bored that for more. Mansuni, our Jim Ray Company Limited. What did Jim Ray? Now they are selling. Jim Ray is asking you. Everywhere to carry. Kofolia, Afiyanya, West Palm City, Kaswa, East Palm City, Kaswa, and Nisha Hills. Numbers here: zero five zero nine four six one six seven five and zero two six five one four nine nine. I mean, coming back to Dancer Man has brought me all sort of mixed feelings because Dancer Man is actually my hood. That's where this whole entertainment thing actually started from. Just a few meters away from here. So we're still at the Dancer Man market and we are with our mother who is also a big fan of restoration. And it's so amazing. It's like the Dressmakers Association in this market have actually captured us. And yes. it's been like moving from one to the other. Mommy, how are you doing? Fine. We thank God. Please, what's your name? Christina Udru. Auntie Christy. Yes. You, you love restoration. And I, I, I love the scenarios you've been given and how when you don't have meetings you always make it a point to watch what, what do you learn from the show what what I, learn is that I learn about people's life and the whole, what they've gone through in life and then what, I, what they are doing now and it encourages me so much and the way you ask the questions you give them the detail of, the details of what they are going through and I like the way we do that. Wow, especially. thank you. I mean, the, the best way to, I, I believe that when people come on the show, it's also a form of healing for them. Oh, yes. When you give them the opportunity to really pour so out. So the way you ask the question, it gets deeper. When they answer the question deeper, they know what's going on. Wow. I like that. The way thank you very much. Now, I've, I've got three points. So <laughs> which one was your favorite episode? The one I was talking about, the lady who got pregnant and then, decided to keep the baby the and kept the pregnant for a long time. And then people advised, she is an actress. I just forgot the name. Vicky uh -huh. Yeah. And then she said she will not support it. She will keep the baby. And the baby, she gave it to a baby boy. Yeah. And she kept the boy growing up. And you asked. And so does the boy need the father. So I just introduced him. This is your father. That's it. That, that's it. Me. This lady. This is. And it's it's went its way. Wow. Yes. Wow. 
to our us. So we, we are very grateful for how you take time to watch. And I just love how you said that, how I asked the question. Yes. Really you you will surely to give the, deep, the deeper side of the answers, wow. the, the way we do it. Thank you. So Penny much. can't hide anything, the way we ask the question. Thank you. And I like that. Thank you so much. So today I'm here because Hisense wants us to say thank you oh. for supporting Restoration oh. all the years through. So we have something special from Hisense oh. for you. Yes. <laughs> so Hisense is saying we should give you this. Oh, I see. Yes. It's thank our you. kettle. Thank you. So anytime you come, you can actually have your hot water have your breakfast, whatever you want to do with it. Or you can even take it home. When you want to go bath, you just mm. heat your water and you don't have to keep checking. You see what I You see what I Once it's done, bah, it's up. Then you can go take a hot shower. So thank you very much, Molly. Oh, sassy. So what do you have to say to Hisense? Thank you, Hisense. God bless you. And your product should be the number one in Ghana. It is already number one. So now we want to be number one across the world. world. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much Mommy. So Mommy is our winner for this week. Next week, we'll bring you another winner for our Super High Sense crazy giveaway. Okay. Restoration. Congratulations to our winner for this week's High Sense Super Crazy Giveaway. And today our audience will get to pick and our guest would also take something home. But listen, if you're just joining us, this is an intense one. Kate, you are macho. Like, seriously, I'm not joking. Special grace. I'm not joking. You, you, you get your first surgery done second surgery now this condition is trying to keep you stuck in a chair where you can't walk again and by faith yes. you said i would walk mm -hmm. or you had a voice and you did not take it for granted you made a move and you started walking mm -hmm. when you started walking i i know for sure you'd be excited did you yeah. feel this is it that's the end maybe i can have a cool life now Oh yeah, I was excited because at that time my elder sister was planning her wedding without me. Oh. Because they thought, I mean, it's like a, in quotes, useless case because of my paralysis mm -hmm. and everything. So it, just, it happened just before the wedding. And I was one of the maid of honors. So I have even the, the heel, I want the heel. Whoa. I'm doing my one go flats. The thing was, my, my gown was very Long. flowy, so okay. you couldn't even see that I was limping. So when I put the, those slippers there, one, Bakwachia, one is like, because at that time I hadn't had the full mm, use of the leg. Yeah, so, so I was like, Bakwachia is like, uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, it's uh, falling because uh, I, I messed up the shoes, but I'm grateful to God that he changed my story. So I'm just grateful. I, I, I know with work, and your condition, it's always going to be very difficult. difficult. Yes. Well, how has it been for you with people you've worked with? Have I'm they been understanding? Yes. Or they've been something else? Like, are you the only woman here? Mm -hmm. I thank God that I feel like another blessing to everywhere I've worked, they've understood. Even women bosses. My lady boss, um, can I mention her name? Yes, you can. Mrs. Alison Debra, she's been so supportive. Even at a point where I had surgery, I was in London for a, a, quite a while. She came to visit me there. Wow. Yes. Oh, that's a good boy. She came to visit me. There was a time I had crisis at, at work and I was stuck in the loo on the floor. She sat on the floor, town so she sat on the floor with me. So we call them um, for help, somebody to get me to the hospital. So, I mean, God has been good to me. Um, even the male bosses to understand this. Sometimes they see me and say, Kate, go home. Sometimes I don't want to go home because I feel like if I go, I'm going to focus solely mm -hmm. on it. So I try. But when you see my face, you see that then I'm you're going excruciating pain. pain. But thank God, I had a kettle close to my desk, the hot water bottle. I had a guy this um, national service young man who would massage my leg. Oh. So as like I had a backup a system, support, system. support system that really helped with work. So 
everywhere I've went. I don't, even in London, I remember the, my boss then was supposed to be sent to another branch, but she said she would wait for me to come back from my sick leave. They wanted to take somebody in and she said no. She would rather do my job and his, her job till I come back. So wow. for me, when I look back, God has been too good. At that time, I was saying, ah, why me, why me? But through it all, I saw he puts people and there, uh, there to, for me to handle mm-hmm. it. Another thing I noticed was I love kids. I adore kids. I used to tell my mom, oh, me, 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 21, I'll have a child. So my kids will be like my sisters right. and like friends. And this thing happened. Well, what I noticed is, I call I say, oh, this child does not go to anybody. And their mom are looking for them. I have to go around with these kids and look for their parents. So it's like, I don't have mine, but I have a lot of kids. I don't, Mother's Day, the messages that come through, I'm amazed. God is wonderful. Because I said, me like it, but we feeling me. me. I mean, it's amazing. When I look back, I'm thinking, God, it's just wonderful. I just all I can say is, I mean, I don't have my own child. But in Kualani, you know, my sister's kids, my elder sister's second, time on him, no, no. When I come into the room, then you'll be kicking and making wow. until date. The bond I have with this child, it's just something else. I, f- I feel like I have like 10 kids or more oh, already. Really? So I only thank God. But H- has the condition affected relationships? Oh, yes. Um, what this does, I call it the endo monster because it robs you of your femininity. You treat her, you don't have your menses. If it's not treated, you are infertile. And then sex is painful. Excruciating pain. It's like no-go area. Because you know what happens? When it's chronic, because of the adhesions, the organs fuse together. Oh. So my recent one, for example, my bowel was stuck to the uterus, the fallopian tube was stuck somewhere, so they keep have to separate. So, so even that's only so is a miracle, working with organs stuck together. Hey, it's only by God's grace because they, it would definitely affect the function of these mm-hmm. organs because they're not supposed to be fused together. together. But because of the adhesions from the previous surgeries, then it attracts it's inflammation now, then all the organs close to where they did it, you know, stick together. So they call it, like me, I have a frozen pelvis. So imagine, just on your own, no cry, you're in pain. Then, so is it the condition that scares the men or they do not want to understand and learn? Because okay. there are some people, they know you have this condition, mm-hmm. but they are willing to learn and help you. Yeah, most of the time they are willing to learn. But when a guy sees you paralyzed every month, they are just, they are not interested anymore. They have to be sent from God. They, they are not interested. Honestly, they will say all the good things. Oh, as for me, I'm different. I'll be there for you. Let them witness you not being able to walk. Ah, they're gone. They are gone. Have you gone through that experience? Yes, severally. They are gone. So it got to a point I thought, Let, don't, I'm not going to bother anymore. Because the one that came that said, oh, maybe I'm not like that. Maybe I'll treat you better. They see you like that and they are gone. They're just gone. Mm. They, they just vanish, vanish or they yeah. have a conversation. When, when you call them, it's excuses upon excuses. And then gradually they are off. Because maybe you are promised, oh, sexually, we are going to get married. And then mm, all these things. So I realized that, OK, let me tell them straight away. Say, this is what I have. Mm-hmm. And my friends would say, ah, why are you doing that? I said, no, take me as I am. I, I'll tell you from day one that this is the condition I have. I didn't force it on myself. I didn't ask for to have to have it, but I, I have it. It's a reality. So this is me. Take me or leave. So I tell them straight away that this is a condition. And the sympathy thing starts about. So when you're talking, I say, ah, think you cry. It's like this and that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. You're scared. <laughs> they're gone. Like, they're gone. But I'll just say one thing. Society can be very cruel. Mm-hmm. This is me trying to deal with my condition. And then I get people say, ah, also your boy life, sir, onyan wo. Onyan wari. Wash your heels, sir, ma kawiyem. 
honestly, when I came out with this my story, people who started calling me and apologizing to me that they didn't know. They didn't know. So don't judge people wrongly, please. If you don't know, don't just look at the person and just assume, because assumption can be wrong. Be nice to people, because at that time, your smile, your kindness might help that person. Right? Maybe the person is contemplating suicide, because I've been there. You contemplated suicide? Yes. I went to the depression in London. I was given um, antidepressants, but I realized it was getting my condition worse. I get out of my house and I'm running back in because I see people standing, I say they are laughing at me, then I run. That's how bad it got. So this is me, I had to build my self-esteem again. So I said to myself, say, touch who though, even if I don't have one leg, me, if I look in the mirror and I say I'm fine, no matter what you are telling me, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I don't need, I don't need, but it took me a long time to get here. So this is why I'm trying to support these young girls. They need a constant, a you need to tell them, yeah. But recently we had a, a relapse because one of the girls that's reading law in um, Legon that I spoke about, the 16 year old girl, had to visit a hospital and then the doctor tells her, you are too fat to have endometriosis. This fat thing was an issue when I met her and I started talking to her, she's feeling cool about herself mm -hmm. again. And then the doctor tells her, you are too fat, you don't have endometriosis. She cried, calling me crying, I'll do it again. Uh, she's stopping the school, she doesn't want to do anything again because she thinks the fight, all the fight that she went through, even when she was writing the exam, she had to come from the hospital because at that time she had crisis. Mm -hmm. So the drips, no, no, the cultural exam. So to go all this far wow. and hear this, her recently she was in hospital again. I was with her, her mom, and it's it's a constant battle. But for her, she started, um, they started the investigation for five, six years now. So at that time, it had affected her spine mm -hmm. and her uterus. So her uterus, because of her posture, had tilted. It was looking down. So they had to tack it back up. back up. And then doctor said to me, if you delayed bringing them here, it would have affected the kidney. So I'm just urging everybody, I'm begging, just anybody close to you that is saying pain, fine, maybe I can take pain. That one cannot take pain, but everybody in their pain, pain. threshold. Yeah. So please, if somebody is saying your child, your sister, whoever is close to you and is complaining about pain, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying it's endo for real, for sure. But it could be any other, mesh, I mean, reproductive disorder. disorder. So then let's have it checked and not wait till um, later in life and then we can't do anything about it. See, another form of the endo is um, adenomyosis. It oh. is endometriosis of the uterus. That is what Gabriel Union had. Okay. And then had to go for a surrogate because he had miscarried nine times. Mm -hmm. It weakens the muscles of the uterus. So that's why she went for a surrogate. One of the sister, sister, um, Tia, mm -hmm. one of them, same thing. It's amongst us. It's very close to us. But we hardly talk about that's it. Because what I got from doctors when I was growing up, when we get to the consulting room, I say, man, says, no eye contact. Then they start giving me painkiller. So that's how come 11 years space, I was misdiagnosed. But I'm just begging the doctors, medical personnel, nurses, when we come to you and we are complaining, please be nice to us. Mm -hmm. Because we are going through too much. We are dealing with a lot to, for us to be mishandled, like treated anyhow. We just need the empathy, please. We need you to understand and help us. Recently, um, we had a call. Uh, um, I had a call from you. Yes. And I was listening to you on the other side and I felt, is she all right? Because <laughs> she sounded drunk. So yeah. I felt, okay, maybe she had some wine or something. Because <laughs> her speech was yes. like bled mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. It was as if she was choking on the speech. So I just sent a voice note asking if she was all right. It was then you told me yeah. you were actually in hospital and had undergone surgery. Yes. What landed you there again? It's the endo, that's the eighth surgery. I had it last month. How bad had it gotten? I was really trying to 
I'll say dodge the, the surgery because ah, my body is tired. But the pain, I said, okay, doctor, I'm here, please. Okay, so wh <laughs> where do you go? What do they do to you? Do they okay, what catch they... you out? Yes. Okay, so what has happened over the years is because my organs stick together, I have like two, three surgeons, and then they open me up. Like, yeah, they open me up, and then... Horizontally or vertically? I've got vertical and I've got horizontal as well. I've got the bikini and I've got the horizontal a few times. But this current doctor that I said I met, that comes from the from America, is did a keyhole, but he still did a lot. What he, that they do is they blow your tummy up and then you cut like what a he balloon. has to cut. Yes, like a balloon. And you're, you're being put to sleep and then they blow you up and then they try and cut whatever so they need to cut. Artificial pot belly. Yes, artificial <laughs> pot belly, yeah. And they try to cut what they need to cut or stitch what they need to. And normally, fibroids is another thing that comes with it. I've had this big, I think it was my fourth surgery at Leicester Hospital. They removed a, a, fi a fibroid that was this big. Oh. Yes, the pain, it was sitting on my nerve, on my left leg. It, it was giving this me so much pain. Troublesome. Yes. So much pain. And then later they said, oh, apart from all that we did, there was a big fibroid that we we didn't really expect. Mm -hmm. It was huge. Recently, when I had the surgery, there was three removed as well. Fibroids. And it was actually hidden. Where it was hidden, any doctor can miss it. It was hidden between the uterus and the, the, the bowel. So he had to cut and stitch things. And I mean, I saw the video. I've seen the video. I've seen a few. He showed me what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I was very curious to see. So I, what happened with you, me calling you and being high, is the gas that they filled the tummy with. No. And Anastasia and I was no. I had not come out properly. So I wasn't really, I didn't remember what I was even telling you. But I, I listened to it later and I said, Oh, um, you're doing well with the cervical cancer campaign. And mm -hmm. I said, that wasn't why I wanted to call Stacey. Why did I say that? <laughs> so I called you back and I, yes. I, I said, oh, I'm sorry. That's what I meant you to were, say. You were high I was something. reminding you of the endometriosis talk. That's what I, why I called it. But I just said this whole long thing. I, I don't even remember. But hey, I mean, I thank God for life. L listening to it, it sounds expensive. Yes. Um, uh, how... How do you get money? Hey. So it's oh, a, it's a struggle, but I, I thank God. It's a struggle. It got to a point I had to secure loans to do it. You're joking? Yes. Because this other one that I said I had at Lister, oh, I didn't want to mention, but it's okay. Um, I was sent emergency, and then they tell me your bill is 25000 because they needed to save my life before they told me the, the cost. The cost. So it, I didn't have to wait to be told the cost they and go and get the money. Needful, they needed to do I it immediately. Because yes. most hospitals Wouldn't would demand it. their money. Yes, yes. And I always say, Dr. Hiaji, at that time, I mean, he's one of the doctors that would... It felt like he was a woman. He was understanding my condition. Because the kind of questions he was asking me, I knew I was in good hands. So... That's another, I'll say thank you to the nurses there, and they took really good, real, real good care of me as well. But, um, Stacey, this is... After you recovered, you had to deal with 25,000. Oh, yeah, um, I paid some, but um, thank God. I mean, it's sorted, but it's a struggle. Like this recent one, it's not like I was asked to pay everything immediately because I'm doing the campaign with the doctor. Mm -hmm. But it's still money that's a certain that I need to pay. So... The earlier we get it, the cheaper treating it. When it becomes chronic, it becomes difficult very to manage expensive. and a very expensive. So I believe earlier diagnosis is in everything is the best. Yeah. Wow. Have you checked? Have you checked? Yeah. But I know now you'd be checking. So now if you're having this pain, don't just say it's just another menstrual pain. It could be something very serious. So I think from now, even viewers watching us across the world will know that it's not just a pain. It could be something bigger than that. So are you ready for a high sense moment? Yes.
Come on. It's like you want to sleep. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's see who our winner for this week is. <laughs> okay. Come on. No, it's like when someone wins, <laughs> jealousy sets in. Why? <laughs> Congratulations, darling. Yeah, now it's Bosa. No more hacks. It's just Bosa. Thank you. So, Kate, it's your turn. Kindly pick one envelope then. Let's see. Okay, kindly open it. It's yours. High sense steamer pan. Okay, so she gets a high sense steamer pan. Okay. Whoa. I'll be visiting. And oh, you see, this is so durable. Yeah. And I, so I know it would be of very, very good, good use. Yeah. yeah. Thank That's you when so you even go to the hospital, hope. you can take it. But yeah. I don't want to see you in no, the I'm hospital not going again. You I'm don't have going. to. No, no more surgeries. No more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. Right, so, you. and from Lexta Ghana, we have this for you thank as you. well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For being such a strong woman. So everything is here. Washing powder, mm. our kitchen towels, thank sanitary you. pad, oh, thank um, you. panty liners, toiletries. It's thank like a full you. pack. Thank you, thank you very you much so for much. coming. And finally, from Jay's Cakes. Oh, okay. You love cake. <laughs> I'm not allowed it. So when I get it, then I, I'm, okay. I want to eat it. I, I really it. enjoy it. This I'm not allowed it. And I love the rose. Once in a while. Josephine oh, and the lovely. team, thank you very much. And you see, endo color, sorry. I'm talkative when it comes to these things. Endo color is yellow. Oh, really? And I've got the cake with the yellow. That's how come it, it says something, That's right? The, yeah. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. And you can locate thank Jay's you. Cakes at School Junction at Chaliboche. And now if you have your parties, they are actually out there to serve you well. The best cakes you can have in town. And a big thank you going to Zasuza Catering. Zasuza is responsible for all the most amazing food you want in this world, not in Ghana, in this world. I'm a foodie. I love good food. So when I tell you food is good, it means it is good. Thank you going out to our sponsors, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel to Hisense, Yas Washing Powder and Yas Sanitary Pad, Hooch Corn and Choco Flakes. We're saying a very big thank you to Jim Ray, Ophelia of ABS Collections, GTP, thank you very much. To Vic D, thank you for styling my hair. And to Inshilo, I'm very grateful for this wake up. Thank you to Divine Cassie for my makeup and GH Beauty Artistry for Kate's makeup and Stacey's Boutique GH for my shoes. It has been an interesting episode. And I'm sure now mothers out there, when your daughters complain, you're not just going to sit and watch. It would be of interest whenever they tell you, mommy, I'm having crumbs. They could be crumbs, but not always crumbs. Make sure you take them out so that doctors can have a look at them. Then you can be rest assured that they're good. If not, you might be walking some very, very dangerous road. Thank you very much to all our viewers. To Frame Masters, thank you very much. To Kofi Africa Photography, thank you very much. Team M Clan, you are simply amazing. We'll see you next week. And always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Welcome to the end of the tunnel. I see a bright light shining through. And it's just for you. There is hope.